All right, it is uh, 4.07, and we welcome to uh, the broadcast the CEO of Covenant Health, uh, Mr. Jim Vandersteeg. Mr. Vandersteeg, welcome to the broadcast. Well, thank you, Howard. It's always uh, good to be with you. I uh, I guess we start with just congratulations before we get into some other stuff. My understanding is that Covenant Health ranked number 15 as a 2020 Best in State Employer, as ranked by Forbes magazine, uh, which was among a list of 75 top employers in the state. Uh, congratulations, and talk to us a, a little bit about how your team has been working to make sure that Covenant is a great place to work. Well, well, thank you, Howard. Um, you know, out of all the awards that the organization gets, this is probably if not the most rewarding, for sure, one of the most rewarding. But um, over the last little less than five years, we've actually been um, received six awards from Forbes. Um, we've been named twice as one of the America's best employers. We've been named best employer for diversity, best employer for women. And then, as you just mentioned, we've now received twice the award of being one of the state's best employers. And so um, at Covenant, we we tell our employees we want to be first and best choice. And so we've got a great leadership team here that uh, works real hard to communicate well with our employees, engage them, um, make sure they know that they have an opportunity to make a difference every day. And, and obviously we, we try to make sure we've got good benefits, a good place to work. Um, we try to really take care of our employees during COVID um, when things really hit us. Um, back in March when we had to start closing a lot of our business down. Um, we did some things to protect our employees. We guaranteed 50% compensation during that time. And, and we also created a $2 million fund, which um, was specifically set up to help our employees during that time for those that were struggling, families, being able to, be able to pay bills and things like that. So, um, you know, obviously there's different times that you know, you demonstrate to your employees that you really do care about them. So COVID was a unique time for us to do that. All right, let's talk about COVID, though. Uh, you are the largest employer in East Tennessee, but you run a lot of hospitals, health care facilities. So you've been on the front line in this. Can you give us from your vantage point where we are with COVID based on the metrics you're able to look at uh, within your systems? What do you see? Yeah, so, so Halloran, obviously back in March, you know, worldwide, we didn't know a whole lot about COVID. And and I think, as you recall, in fact, you and I had a discussion, I believe, back then. But that's when in, in uh, March, um, that by halfway through March, we really cut off all of our outpatient business um, in order to um, try to be prepared for the amount of volume we were going to get. So we basically shut off that business for March, April, and then really through part of May, and during that time, um, we didn't have a lot of COVID patients like you saw in other parts of the country. But about probably six to seven weeks ago, we started across this market um, getting more and more um, inpatients. We obviously, you've probably seen the numbers that the, just purely the numbers of people that have tested positive in the, in the Knoxville market have gone up. But we also started seeing in this market a pretty significant increase in the number of patients that got admitted and in the ICU. The good news is the last two weeks, we started to see a decline in that. There's a, there's a definite trend line with a decline. Um, we, we do have COVID patients in the hospital, again, much more than we had back in March, but, but the peak has um, been going down the last couple of weeks. Um, obviously, we need to keep up those things that um, help with that. I mean, the last um, three or four weeks, you've seen a you know a real increase in people being much more aware of social distancing, um, people wearing masks, um, going into public places, and um, you have to think that has played some role in in uh, in the decline that we started to see in the numbers, especially in in, in the high acuity patients. So. Um, we're not, um, quote, out of the proverbial woods yet, but I would say the trend line that we're seeing here, and, and by the way, I've also seen the data from across the state. That's the same trend line across the state the last two weeks or so, um, um, an obvious decline in patients that end up needing acute hospital care. So uh, uh, would you say your assessment is we're moving in a positive direction? 
we are definitely moving in a positive direction. Obviously, you know, everybody's concerned about what happens as, you know, schools open, um, what happens as universities open and, you know, athletic events and things like that. And, you know, I think if people will do the right things, we, hopefully we can continue to see the same trends. Um, but to, to, from the data that I'm looking at, we, the trend line is in the correct direction. Let's talk about keeping your people and your teams both safe and motivated. How's morale for your frontline workers? And what are you guys doing internally to keep your team safe and the hospitals very sanitized? That I would imagine that you've had to expand your capacity for that. Yeah, so, uh, Howard, morale has been good. In fact, um, one of the stories I tell people is when I first went out and started visiting hospitals several months ago when, when we started seeing more COVID patients, um, I'll, I'll just I'll highlight Park West for a minute. All the staff that was working in the in the the, the designated COVID unit had volunteered to take care of those patients, and I just was so impressed that a staff would actually ask to serve in that area. Um, the volumes have gone up. Obviously, back in uh, the kind of mid May, we started up all of our outpatient surgery and outpatient diagnostics again. So we started getting volumes back and then we started getting COVID volumes and so I would say we have staff that are tired um, they've worked hard I so respect the the way they've worked I so respect the way they've kept the patients first um, as they've taken care of them but I think morale overall is good um, we just we continue to try to get more staff and and as you can imagine nationwide that's a challenge too everybody's looking for staff right now um, you know, I think the things that we've done to try to continue to, to motivate them is obviously to, to recognize them. Um, I do appreciate tremendous efforts that were done by the community to recognize our, our, our hospitals during this time. We've had food delivered um, to every one of our institutions. We've had at Park West, people get in their cars and pray for the staff, um, and all that's been good. I, I have had um, one organization ask me, what do we need to do in the future? And one of the things I've said is let's remember and, and that every day this is what our staff does. And so I'm hoping next year we can figure out how to maybe engage our community more in like hospital week and nursing week and things like that. So um, our community continues to recognize that, you know, the real heroes in healthcare are those who take care of patients here every day, our physicians, our nurses, all those, the housekeepers, the food service workers, the transporters, those are the real heroes, heroes in healthcare. Uh, well, please make sure you pass along from the community and from us uh, our sincere appreciation. We don't get to see the folks that are on the front lines yeah. doing the work, but you you know of them, you see of them, you see them. Uh, not only are you serving people and saving people, but then you you're leading the team of people that are serving this community. So thank you very much, and congratulations on what I think is a well deserved. Uh, a recognition by Forbes magazine uh, and continue uh, doing what you're doing. Thank you, Howard. Always good to talk to you. All right. Look forward to talking to you again. That is the CEO of Covenant Health, Jim Vandersteeg, on the Triple H Radio Experience. 415 Airborne.